In this video, I'm going to show you a free and open source tool that you can use to automate a lot of your pen testing as well as malware analysis for mobile applications. The tool that I'm talking about is the Mobile Security Framework, also known as MobSF. According to their own description, it is an automated all-in-one mobile application pen testing, malware analysis, and security assessment framework capable of performing static and dynamic analysis. And it says it supports mobile app binaries along with zip source code and provides REST APIs. So now that we know what MobSF is, first thing we need to do is install it. And if you actually just want to try out MobSF just to give it a little trial run to see how you like it, there is actually an online version that you can just connect to automatically without having to download and install anything. And that's just at mobsf.live. So if you want to just check that out, I'll put the link in the description and you can try it out and see how you like it yourself. But given the choice, I would prefer having the tool installed myself just so I have more control over it. And also I believe there are some features that aren't available in the live version. But if you just want to get a feel for the tool, feel free to check out the online trial version that's available right now. So they have a pretty simple little setup process describing the documentation here. They actually have a Docker container set up. So as long as you have Docker installed, you can just set it up with just a couple commands. So the first command we're going to run is just going to be docker pool open security slash mobile security framework mobsf colon latest. And we're also probably going to need to run it with sudo just so we have those root permissions when we run it. So now it's just going to download everything it needs to set up that container and it should take a couple minutes and then once it's finished we'll move on to the next step. So there we go, it just took a couple minutes to finish downloading and now that we have that image for our Docker container downloaded, now we can actually try to run our container and see if we can actually take a look at MobSF and see how it works. So now we're just going to run docker run dash it dash dash rm dash p 8000 colon 8000 open security slash mobile security framework mobsf colon latest. And again, we're probably gonna to need to run this with sudo. So once it boots up and runs all its checks to make sure it doesn't need any updates or anything, then it says it is listening at http colon slash slash 0.0.0.0 colon 8,000. So now we can just open that link if we maximize that window, now we see we have our little console here and it says you can upload and analyze, drag and drop anywhere, or you can also actually enter a package name if you know the package name of the app that you want to look at. But I think I'm actually going to just give it an APK file and try to see if it will do some analysis on an Android binary for me. So for my little demo of MobSF working with an Android app, I'm just going to download the APK of this damn vulnerable bank app, which is an intentionally vulnerable Android app that is used for a lot of demos and different things to try to practice and learn how to hack an Android app. If anyone is interested, I could actually do a full analysis of this app and go through how I would look at it if I was actually given this app to do a pen test on, but that can be a future video. Just let me know and maybe I'll do that one day. But I'm just going to download the APK from uh, this little project and I'm going to run Run it through MobSF. So I just uploaded that Dan Vulnerable Banking app and it says it's analyzing it right now. So it should just take a couple minutes and then we'll get some results. So there we go. That just took a couple minutes and now we have all this information and we can go through and see what it gives us. So the first thing that I see, it gives us a security score and it gave it a 39 out of 100. So that's not really good. And you can also go through all this file information, like the name of the APK, there's the app name, the package name, the main activity, the target SDK, the min SDK, and you also get the hashes like the MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256. But what we really want to look at is what it's actually finding in the app. So the first big things that it calls out is it looks at all the activities, services, receivers, and providers. I talked a little bit about these things back in my video way back a long time ago where I looked at Drozer and how you can use Drozer to work with those different components of an Android app. I haven't really talked much about activities, services, receivers, and providers since then, but maybe I'll end up going into a little bit more of a deep dive on that in another video in the future. Let me know if that's something you want me to do. But the big thing you want to take a look at in these things is what is exported. And there are no exported services, receivers, or providers, but there are five exported activities. So exported activities are things that can come into play and be involved in different kinds of vulnerabilities and things you could report to an Android app that you were testing. 
Over here in this box, you can see that you can look at the Android Manifest, which I've talked about several times. The Android Manifest is a really good place to start anytime you're starting to look at an Android app. You can look at the source code. And if you click on that, look at the source, then it opens up this little GUI that is kind of similar to JADX if you've used that much. It kind of gives you a little breakdown over on the left side of the file structure in the binary. And you can click on any particular app and then look at the Java code over on the right side. So that's pretty nice. It kind of has like a built-in JADX functionality inside the whole UI of MobSF. And you can also click on view Somali and you can look at the Somali code, which is much less readable than Java code, but depending on what you're looking at, sometimes the Somali code is helpful. So that is also an option that is there for you. But also if you do anything where you want to make edits to the code or you want to uh, do something with it with a different tool, you can also actually click these buttons to download the Java code or the Smiley code or just download the APK for whatever reason. Next, we're going to take a look at the information about the signing certificate. This is really useful for a lot of different vulnerabilities that have to do with forging signatures and things like that, like the Janus vulnerability, which was a pretty big deal several years ago. It's not as big a deal now because there are a lot of other protections that have been put in place by Android and things like that that make it less of a big deal. But if something is being only signed with the version one signature or it has a really short signing key, that's something you can call out in a report. And this just gives you a full output of everything you need to know about the signer certificate. Next is the permissions. So um, I've talked about it before in the past, but having an overprivileged application is kind of a problem. If you have permissions enabled that allow you to like read and write to the SD card and uh, just get overly privileged information and have permissions that the app doesn't need, that can be a problem. So next is information about the API and it actually gives you a path to the file in the binary that actually has the code that deals with that API. So like this stuff that deals with base 64 decoding and encoding, it shows you where that is done in the application. So this is good for any sort of further investigation you wanna do. Like if you think maybe it's mishandling some sort of API key or it's hard coding a password and it's just like base 64 encoding it instead of actually hashing it or doing something securely like it should, then you can take a look at everywhere in the code that's doing something with base 64 decoding and encoding, and that can give you an idea of what it could be doing wrong. Next is browsable activities. And being able to browse directly to an activity can cause problems. It can give access to parts of an application that you're not supposed to have access to. For example, in this app, there is a browsable activity that is named currency rates. So that's probably going to give you some information about the currency rates in the application. And depending on what's in that file, maybe there's something that the user isn't supposed to have access to. Maybe only someone that's an admin or something is supposed to have access to that. So that's something to take a look at. If you have a bunch of browsable activities, you should check out and see what those activities are actually doing. So next is network security. And this is where we're actually gonna get some severity scores, which are gonna impact something that could be a security finding in a pen test report. So all three of these issues are actually bypasses in the Android manifest and the network security config file that actually bypasses the Android built-in protections that kind of prevent um, man in the middle attacks and just kind of makes things more difficult for attackers. So this is definitely something I would call out in a pen test report if I saw this in an app I was testing. Next is a certificate analysis, and this is just an informational. It's just letting them know that the application is signed with a code signing certificate. So we already looked at the signing information earlier, so that's kind of related to that. Next is the manifest analysis, and this is where you're going to find a lot of those things that could end up in a pen test report or maybe sort of lead you down a rabbit hole of figuring out a more serious finding of a actual like full exploit that could be done. 
And I don't really want to go through every single one of these and point out what is a problem and why it's a problem because this is just a little demo of an intentionally vulnerable app. So there are going to be a lot of things, but the manifest analysis is going to be something you really do want to pay attention to anytime you run an app through this. Next is the code analysis. And again, this is going to be something that this could call out things that would end up in a pen test report and it could be something that could lead to more serious exploits. It found that it logs sensitive information and it also shows you a path to all the different files in the binary where they're actually doing that logging, which that is a lot. They are clearly logging a lot of stuff. So if I see this, this would definitely make me want to, in my dynamic analysis, when I'm actually running the app and like messing with it and seeing what it's doing, I would want to look at the logcat to see what information is actually being written to the logcat as I'm logging into the app and using the different functions of it. So things like that can actually inform your activity and what you're going to be doing with the app as you're doing that dynamic analysis later on. But again, I'm not going to go into detail in all these different things. This is just to demo MobSF and how it works. Next is looking at the shared library binary analysis. This is taking a look at the stack canaries and different binary protections that are in place. Next is the APK ID analysis. This is probably gonna be more helpful when you're doing malware analysis. If you have a binary that you think might be malware, this will tell you if maybe if you run this on an emulator, they could have anti-VM code that could be making it behave differently. So that can inform how you actually do your analysis. And next is the quark analysis, which is another thing that is going to be helpful if you're doing malware analysis, but nothing significant comes up in this because it's not actually malicious, it's just vulnerable. Next is the server locations. Again, this is going to be better for malware analysis, but it's probably not going to be that helpful when we're doing a pen test because what do we care where their servers are? We're just trying to point out vulnerabilities in their application. And another check more for malware analysis than pen testing is the domain malware checking. So it's just going to look at all these servers that it talks to and see if it's known to serve malware or if it's a good server that doesn't have any issues. Next, it shows you all the URLs that are found in the binary. So it talks to localhost, it talks to the Firebase endpoint for that app. Next is the Firebase database. You can sometimes find some Firebase endpoints where the database isn't protected and you can get access to that backend Firebase database for the application. Next, we have emails that are found. This probably isn't going to be a big deal, but occasionally someone may have hard coded an email address into the source code that shouldn't be there. Trackers, nothing significant came from that. Next, possible hard coded secrets. This could be a big one. A lot of times applications could have hard-coded API keys or passwords or things like that in the source code. So it is always good to look at the strings that are hard-coded in the app just to make sure they don't have any of that information hard-coded in there. And it also prints out all of the strings from the APK resource, which is the actual strings file in the application binary. So you can actually look through all of these yourself just to see if there's something in there that kind of catches your eye but most of the time it's probably not going to be anything that's a problem, but it's always worth just checking just to make sure. And I think the only things left are just the actual information about the binary, like what are the names of all the activities that were found, the names of the services, there were no receivers, the name of the provider, and if there were any libraries that were found, and then the actual files of all the files in the binary. So that was a lot of information. We went through a lot there, but that is kind of a demonstration of the kind of things that you can get from MobSF when you scan an APK with it. And this isn't going to do everything you need for you. It's not just like a plug and play and be like, okay, scanned it with MobSF. Now I print a report and deliver that to the client and my job is done. You still need to take that information that you got from MobSF and your own analysis and kind of go down the path of figuring out what vulnerabilities need to be reported, what's a problem, what's not, all that kind of stuff. I will point out that there are enterprise level tools that are available that cost licensing fees and all that, that I think do a much better job than MobSF. They do give you a lot more complete picture of what the binary is doing and what kind of issues need to be addressed. And they do a lot more of that work for you. 
But if you're just a beginner doing this on your own or you don't have the resources to pay for those licenses for those enterprise tools, MobSF does a pretty good job for a free and open source tool. And it doesn't only handle Android, it also does iOS apps as well. And the last thing that I wanted to point out before I end this video is it also has this REST API. However you wanna set up your like sort of automated workflow, you can pretty easily set up MobSF within that same workflow because it has this REST API. Again, reminder, I think there are better enterprise level tools that require a license to actually purchase them and use them that give you a better, more complete picture of an application that you're testing. But if you are a beginner or you're just sort of like building out your mobile pen testing program or you can't afford the licenses to those enterprise tools, whatever the case may be, if you're looking for a pretty simple and free open source option to do some automated static analysis, MobSF is a pretty good option in my opinion.